go ahead and close public comment now, and we will move to our scheduled item, uh, which is an oral report on homeless issues. Good morning, Madam Chair, Manny Gonzalez, CCAO, Dr. Kennedy Office. I'm here with Ellie Robinson and Elsa. But we also have this uh, mayor of uh, Salinas and Don from the city as well. Don Reynolds. Mayor and Don, would you like to come up with that? Sure. All right, sorry, then, yeah. This is at the request of uh, Supervisor uh, Armenta last week. At, uh, thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, supervisors. Uh, Last week, uh, Lou Bauman asked that uh, the city come and present the status of its efforts in regards to homelessness, and I'm happy to do that. And as you know, we've been busy, and it is probably time for an update to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, uh, just in general framework, um, I just want to make clear that, that the city has been working compassionately to relieve the suffering of homelessness for decades. Uh, I'm sure most of the board is aware of our efforts dating back to the 60s. And when and our 100 block is referred to as the skid row, what have we done specifically? Well, we've helped interim uh, develop four different units to house the mentally ill homeless, the Soledad Street project, California Street project, Hoopin Gardens, and most recently, $2 million into Sunflower Gardens. These are all facilities that the city has actively supported to help the homelessness. Um, in the past, the past three years, we gave about $680,000 services. The city and the county have worked together to support the McHome program. These are social workers going into the tents, talking to the homeless people directly, and doing their best to serve them. In this framework, we still have the responsibility of serving 150,000 people in our city. We also have a responsibility to redevelop those parts of our town that are in the greatest need. So back in 2005-2007, under Mayor Caballero's leadership, We've developed the Salinas Downtown Community Board and the 2007 vision for our Chinatown. We revised that. We brought in experts on homeless services, and we developed the 2010 Chinatown Rebound Plan. And it was home-based from San Francisco that took the core of our homeless action plan in that 2010 <coughs> Chinatown uh, Rebound and put it into the Leave Me Home Plan. So they're related, they're integrated, and they just demonstrate how we're working together. Most recently, our pipeline has been greatly diminished for housing, but we are supporting the housing authority right now under construction 50 units of senior housing in Chinatown. The next step is the, uh, the, the uh, family housing, also on Rossi Street, also bordering Chinatown. And then the third one in the pipeline will be our peninsula housing project. These are 90 units of housing in the center of Chinatown on city property, uh, 50 units dedicated to homeless people. In addition, I'm sure that the board is aware of our efforts with with the Franciscan workers and the $200,000 intended improvements to provide showers and restrooms on Lake Street in Chinatown, and our, and our effort to redevelop 10 Soledad Street uh, for, for similar services. So the investment is there, um, and we are working towards this service center for homeless. These are temporary issues, but we need to connect directly our services with our housing. That's key as we work with the homeless community in our, in our city. So, Further, to redevelop our Chinatown, we have to look at streets, we have to look at land use, block consolidation, we have to look at brownfields and other issues. We have to look at reconnecting Chinatown to our downtown and make the vibrancy plan that the Board of Supervisors supported work in conjunction with these other assets. So to that end, I'll specifically focus briefly on our cleanup efforts because this has become an increasingly uh, acute problem as I'm sure the Board is aware. It was at the February 3rd meeting of the Downtown Community Board where uh, Fire Marshal uh, Fire Marshal Pamek and, and Captain uh, Vaughn came to describe to the Downtown Community Board meeting on Soledad Street of the terrible time they're having getting their engines into our Chinatown. They were responding to a, a cardiac arrest and they couldn't get the engine down the road to the people that needed it. Um, this type of problem uh, has been escalated because when we adopted our policy in December, our cleanup policy, we did not do any cleanup for four months. So what this indicates is that the problem has continued to get worse. So quickly, a review of our December policy is one that involves you. We uh, receive a complaint on a homeless encampment, we do an inspection and reconnaissance, and then we immediately call the service providers to see what kind of help we can get to people living in this area 
before we go and post, before we go and give any notice that we have to clean up. But the issues are acute. The, uh, well, I, I won't go into detail on the needles and, and the human waste and other issues that we confront when we do go out to clean up. So we're always, we've always contacted the social service providers first. So the new ordinance that the city adopted in December and last fall provides uh, a condition of, of how a homeless person should be living with that the desire or goal to get to something we refer to as a six to six policy. And it's a policy adopted from the city of Los Angeles after several uh, court decisions were made, which allows a person to reside on our sidewalks and streets and, and sleep the night from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. But at 6 a.m. they need to move along. And the goal is to avoid these permanent shelters that we have built now in our Chinatown and other places in our city. Uh, the law also addresses personal property. And this was the issue of a, of a federal lawsuit that's still being discussed. What is personal property in the definition? So initially, we talked about bulky items being personal property. And on February 9th uh, of this year, we changed the ordinance and we removed that bulky provision, creating a much broader definition of, of what personal property is. And we also declared a state of emergency because we have a situation where our, our fire trucks can't get through, the trash trucks can't get through, and other issues in the, in the area. So with that, um, the, court put, uh, the, the court agreed and allowed us to move forward with our cleanup. And so on February 9th, we declared the state of emergency. And then um, March 7th, we met with social service providers. At uh, 4 p.m. at City Hall, we had Catherine Thierney from the Coalition of Homeless Service Providers. We had the home program. And we had Jill Allen from Franciscan Workers of Pinnipur. Uh, and we shared with them our plan, Clean Up Chinatown. And as a 90-minute meeting, we went through the details. We're going to post the whole neighborhood. We're going to work with homeless service providers and pull every chain we can and find housing for folks, uh, including our warming, sh uh, warming shelter that remains open. Uh, that is also a shared resource with the county. And, and look at housing vouchers and how we get people into apartments better. How uh, we can facilitate uh, uh, using those vouchers rather than having people turn away. So we started that conversation, and, and on uh, March 8th, we planned to post. And at the request of uh, the Franciscan workers and the Coalition of Homeless Service Providers, we postponed that until they could meet directly with the community. So on March 8th, there were three meetings held that Catherine and Jill sponsored, describing our process to post and post Salinas Chinatown for 30 days, and that we would be there on or around uh, March 23rd to initiate a cleanup. A cleanup that would start slowly, carefully, but with the most acute areas in Chinatown, where fire hydrants are completely covered by encampments where the fire engines can't get through. Now, there was a murder there last Tuesday at the same location where we planned to initiate our cleanup. So this is uh, it's a tough job, a job that nobody wants to do, but uh, the longer we wait, the worse it gets. And so with the support, with the support of service providers, we reached out to the community, and only after then did we post the notices, uh, late in the afternoon on the 8th. So we will be moving forward with a cleanup on the 23rd. But we expect, we don't know how long the cleanup will last, because of the property provision. We've never implemented this before, but uh, it will be slow and careful and uh, as compassionate as can be. Um, but it's something that we have to do as a city. We have to take care of our Chinatown and, the, and our whole community. So that's pretty much a summary. I don't want to take up too much of the board's time. I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Board members have any questions? <coughs> So I'm not going to go into details of all our kind of homeless programs. We presented that to your board several times previously. Um, but as we learned of the um, the, the coming uh, cleanup in Chinatown. There are a few elements that we paid attention to as county staff to make sure um, we at least began the process to make sure they're in place. And some of the, you know, two of those elements um, are part of our implement weather plan. So there's the winter warming shelter, which can provide kind of an expanding level of housing as transition happens. And actually, the city of Salinas, I know uh, Don Reynolds has reached out to Raspania about extending the winter warming shelter. Without extension, that would actually close on March 31st. So our goal is to look at expanding that 
you know, that shelter area where, you know, people, you know, feel like the displaced or can't be on the street without their built-up structures, then there's a place to go. There's some other options that are also available that we're working with the um, uh, Coalition of Homeless Services Providers, but that winter warming shelter is most concrete. The other element of the Implement Weather Plan, which is an important ingredient in working through the um, coming cleanup, is the expanded level of um, service provision and case management in the um, Chinatown area. One of the elements we put in this winter for, um, to address the inclement weather was an expansion of services at um, Dorothy's Place, so an expanded drop-in center with expanded case management resources. And you'll recall we brought that to your board um, earlier this year. That contract was developed for the inclement weather season only, which means it would um, end on March 31st. We've engaged in discussions with Dorothy's Place, that's the part that we're kind of um, taking lead on. Um, and what would it take to expend, extend that um, expanded case management and drop-in uh, center service through the end of June? Um, so with those conversations, um, the kind of the increase that would be needed to extend that contract through, through the end of June is $62,462. We still have some contracting machinations to work through. Um, but we're prepared to do that, and Dorothy's place is also prepared to engage with us. In the meantime, we're going to do a no-cost extension, probably through April, to give us time to um, continue the contract. But what you know, I look for right now is your board's direction on do we move forward with uh, expansion through the end of June for the Dorothy's place, um, um, through the Dorothy's place um, extension. Now, I, I, I can't have an action item, but, you know, somehow just to know that that's, you know, a direction item that we're moving in, then we would return back to your board with an action item, and we can use the uh, amendment provisions in our existing authority to, to kind of work through that time period. So those are the, the kind of the two elements are expanding winter warming shelter, which Salinas is taking the lead on, and expanding the drop-in center um, and case management services that Dorothy's Place has provided. I will tell you that um, Dorothy's Place has given us, you know, a, a, a fair amount of detail on what outcomes they've achieved. Um, they've already, um, I think this is through the beginning of February, um, actually through February, in two months they had um, 45 new client intakes, they've completed 36 of the um, called the VI SPDATS, which is a hard word to, which is an acronym for something, but it's the Vulnerability Index Assessment. So they've been doing the, the assessments and they've been referring them through the um, um, Coalition of Homeless Services Providers. So those with the most vulnerability get prioritized for services. Um, clients have been entering the case management system. That's all. Uh, we've been reaching out for the case management services. That's one of the most difficult things to do oftentimes is to bring people into the engagement of services and that's been happening and the basic services have doubled in use and that includes bathing, mail access, bus fare to appointments. So and between January 1st and February 29th they were successful in having five people move out of the encampment living and into the house of peace. So there have been successes already so we're been pleased with that relationship. With that I'll pass the mic over to Good morning, <coughs> Supervisors. Alpha Dinas, Interim Director of Health. As Don alluded to and as Ali has alluded to, the Health Department has been an active participant in terms of uh, being a service provider for individuals as needed. Uh, we've been successful through our MECON program that's funded through our behavioral health and the City of Salinas to be able to identify uh, uh, more permanent housing so solutions for some of these individuals. And so the plan going forward is that we will continue to work with uh, Dorothy's Place and the Coalition for Service Providers and make our services available as needed on a referral basis. Uh, we can provide in terms of uh, further case management of individuals who may be suffering from a behavioral health condition. We can make our public health nurses available to do some intense uh, case management and linkage and referral to services. Uh, we have our Laurel Vista Clinic that's over on the Natividad campus. Um, at our Laurel Family Practice site that is strictly a walk-in clinic and so we provided that resource to them so that the individuals know that they can come there and be seen by a primary care doctor. 
Um, so as, as uh, has been alluded, uh, we'll make ourselves available um, and reassign staff as needed to make sure that we meet needs as presented from the 23rd forward. Thank you. That concludes our presentation, Chair and board members. We can answer any questions uh, at this point. Thank you. Any questions, uh, Supervisor Romero? Uh, I realize we're a little bit short on time today, but I would ask that um, as, as, uh, as direction and request that, that uh, you come back in 30 days and, and let us know what you reported today and even more. Uh, and I, I, uh, I, I, what I'm looking for is a more permanent plan for the homeless, particularly in Salinas. Uh, and uh, uh, I believe that case management should not be an interim measure, should be a long-term permanent measure. I would like uh, to entertain that discussion later and what that means in terms of services and funding. Uh, I would like to see the possibility of, of, of why we're doing all these things in transition. Um, that whether we could extend uh, just the shelter where we have the warmer shelter just on an ongoing basis. I, I want that to come back in 30 days, uh, what that cost. Uh, and so, you know, the last thing is I, I, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the staff and obviously our, our homeless folks that are here today. And uh, I want to thank the city of Salinas, mayor's office. And uh, uh, I, I'm, we're, we're doing some things on an interim basis, but we know, we know uh, that's just a band aid. Uh, and uh, I think we need to look at a permanent plan. Uh, I don't want to, like I said before, I don't, we got the data before us, we got the bodies here, they're here today. I don't want a whole lot of research. I want folks that, that are case managers and that are social workers and everything else. I want a permanent comprehensive plan to at least take a look at that in 30 days, and knowing that it may take us two or three months uh, to, to address that. Uh, I, I, I just, uh, I know folks have been working hard, but uh, I, I believe we've got to do, the county has to do a lot better than it has been. That's all. If I can just comment, Supervisor Mentor, one thing that we do plan on bringing is um, through the budget deliberation process, augmentations kind of for, at least for the case management services, um, that kind of um, continuous presence that you're, you're mentioning. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And, and I get the, the short term. And the city appreciate the work you've been doing. I know you're, you take this seriously. You're trying to do the best you can under a very contractual and difficult situation. And if there was a magic cure or magic formula, we would have found it. But the reality is, as Professor Mehta was indicating, long-term solutions for homeless is to build homes, to build housing. And we know how difficult it is, it's been in this county, countywide, to build any type of affordable housing, whether it's for veterans, whether it's for any segment of our population that's housing. And I always hear it, and I've heard it for years, we all support housing, we all support affordable housing, but when it comes to some communities, not in my backyard. But one of the, 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 the positive things that I've heard about the Chinatown and the work that's been down there is the Mid-Peninsula housing. That is 90 units, 50 for home. That is where I, I think I would like to focus some attention where the county can partner with the city. And, and, and one of the things that I like to hear, because I, I know I walked with Jill Ellen a couple of weeks ago through, through Chinatown seeing some of the situation. That is one where I think partnering together with the nonprofits, the city, the county to see how do we stimulate and get that project moving. And it might be that we need to figure out how do we get that first floor, which is the one where I think is some of the, maybe the, the laps right now to get retail commercial, but I don't think we're going to find too many retailers and commercial, but maybe we could put in the nonprofits and the county offices and all the services that we need to build to, to develop a center that are sort of a one-stop for some of those folks as we expand the intake of case management that, that Dorothy's Kitchen has asked such social service to look at. And so we can start moving those folks that are wanting to get the services and to move on and then deal with the more difficult uh, situation that we might have to deal with. So if we do come back and there's a report, maybe we can focus a little bit on that, on how we can we can help that project get moving sooner rather than later, because ultimately that is part of the long-term solution for this very difficult issue. Appreciate it. And I, I too thank the city of Salinas uh, for coming here and uh, telling us what, what's 
going on and we uh, like like Jim said my supervisor telling us you have a tough situation and you're dealing with and I think the county has been working a lot better and with the homeless coalition to make sure the services you, you can say a lot you're never going to end homelessness forever and ever and ever but we're trying to mm -hmm. do things to make it better uh, are the question are the winter warming shelters the last time you were here they weren't all filled are they have we are they up to capacity filled to capacity oh no um let me turn to um they're at three quarters of capacity. So we still have We still have available. some beds available in our winter warming shelter. But the winter warming shelter, just so you know, is only available during the inclement weather. Go ahead and hear from the public. Um, I do have some speaker slips. Uh, unfortunately, we have a very busy afternoon, so I am going to uh, uh, allow uh, for public comment, uh, but I would ask you uh, to keep your comments to uh, a minute and a half. And if someone has spoken before you and you agree with them, if you would just say so, that would be great. Um, so first speaker is William Silas, yes. and following him is Joe Gambola. Please come forward and make your comments. Thank you, board, again. Uh, to members of the general public. Uh, my name is William Silas. Uh, I am currently a uh, resident of Chinatown. Been homeless uh, off and on since 1997. And thank God I've dealt with it, uh, I guess, satisfactorily. I'm still here. Uh, there are many challenges that face us uh, in the situation that we're in right now. Uh, and, and quite frankly, there's a very strong sense of uh, hopelessness down in Chinatown and fear. People don't know where they're going, what's going to happen, or whatever. Yes, conditions down in Chinatown need improvement. True. Uh, Mr. Callahan spoke of, about a state of emergency. Uh, it's a classification. Uh, there is a state of emergency. But let's put it in correct perspective. Uh, there's, there's some people in some wheelchairs with some presses and stuff. Don't got nowhere to go. Uh, you talk about uh, uh, service providers and stuff. They've gotten rejected in pretty much different terms with that. Uh, veterans, they don't get the help they need the time they need. Uh, there's a lady that is 80-something years old down there. Just give you one, 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 one classic example. Uh, next week, she's getting poops out and booted out of Chinatown. There's no room in door for everybody. Uh, where's she going? 80 something years old. She's had her time down there. Currently trying to find somewhere for her to go. You have to give certain priorities to people. There's, there's, there's children down in Chinatown that are going to be affected by some people coming in and saying, let's do a sweep. Take this camp down. If you want to improve Chinatown, you're going to take, you, you're going to, you're going to eliminate the encampments. Uh, but my, my question is this. Give us some kind of a reasonable accommodation. People talk about uh, housing is being uh, prepared here. We don't see any of that. We don't see any of that. You, 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 you do this week, tomorrow, or next week, where are these people going to be? These people are going to be scattered about wherever. Let's get realistic. We, we, we can wait until housing comes about, you know, good housing, so, so that everybody involved. More than two-thirds of the people in Chinatown are not going to be afforded any kind of housing for the next 60, 90 days, six months, or whatever. Yeah. And if that's dependent upon, you know, the, the programs that are, that are in place right now, where are they going to be? Thank you, sir. Well, we want to just one, 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 one thing, ma'am. We want some kind of reasonable accommodation. If if they're going to come and do sweeps and stuff, give us a little time, you know, to come up with something better for us. If we can can improve the standards where we live right now, that's a big issue right now. Let us attempt to do that. Give us some benefit of that. That's what Thank we're you. saying. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Joe Gambola and then Diana Blaylock. Skipping. Go ahead, Diana. Joe Gambola. Diana Blaylock. <coughs> Do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, 
Thank you, Board of Supervisors, for having us here in the city. Uh, I agree with him. That's what I was saying. You know, give us an opportunity. You know, I'm representing also the C4 program and also the homeless. You know, I know that the same permit. You know, and I'm here to represent, you know, represent them. You know, like I say, you know, I said it before the last meeting. You know, we go out there three days a week. You know, we have a lot, a lot of volunteers out there homeless that came here with us and helped us. And I'm just sorry, you know, give us the opportunity. There's so many people out there. They're nobody going to go. They could be, the great members could be scared. Mm. You know, so you know, it's like like he was saying, you know, the senior citizens, disabled people. You know, where are they going to go? There's some of them. There's a lot of people out there with wheelchairs. They can't even walk. Walkers, children. You know, and I'm with him. You know, give us the opportunity. You know, and that's why we were trying to work on. You know, going out there where all if, if all the messes where the, you know where the city's complaining about. You know, if we're trying to get everybody together. You know, we all can come together in the whole block. You know, we could get that whole block cleaned up and get rid of all that crap out there. You know, so we just, you know, we want you guys just give it the fits of the doubt and give us the chance, you know, to do that. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Marion Smith is next, and then Grace. <coughs> Fire departments and hoses can be connected. There is plenty of time. 
uh, to uh, get these things mitigated. There is no state of emergency. That is the point. And I'm insulted and disappointed that none of you guys are sticking up for this. Every single one of you are just standing there and saying, oh, you guys are doing a great job, good job. Five people house you. Please, if five people are housed, you know there's over 300 people down there. Where are they supposed to go? What are they supposed to do? Well, they should just live out of the back deck or just leave town. And that is what the ultimate goal and objective of this ordinance is. If you're too poor to afford rent, you don't belong in this lens. Thank you for your question. That's horrible. Thank you. Your time is up. Uh, is there any other, uh, anyone else? So businesses are freaking out. Sorry. Thank you. Residents are freaking out. They're going to end up going Thank wherever. You, Thank you, Wes. People are going to trip out, and there is plenty of disappointment going on here. Thank you. in Chinatown, all right? Or they can come back six to six. If we wanted to, and I'm speaking about the county, at least for now, if we wanted to find a place where these folks, warming shelter or anywhere else, could we accommodate them with interim housing is my question. No. 
for all the 250, could we identify 250 units where people could go? Um, not that I'm aware of. You would have to work with them, and there are a number of, I say that for a number of reasons. I mean, are there 250 vacancies in Monterey County at any given time? Probably yes, I haven't studied the vacancy report. But you'd have to work through two things. One is with the people to prepare them for entry. Two, you'd have to kind of ask a question about affordability. Three, you'd have to make an appropriation if you wanted to pay the rent and figure out what are the policies for actually payment of rent and um, that would become a, a substantial issue. Let me, let me just leave it at that. Um, three, you have people, some people who may not be willing in one way or another. And I, I say that more by way of if they have income, would they want to put their income to rent? So there are lots of issues that you have to sort through on an individual basis in order to find that kind of permanent housing that you're suggesting. In terms of establishing expanded transitional and or permanent housing, permanent supportive housing solutions, that is something that I think is something we need to pursue. I know in our conversations with the Community Foundation, there's interest in that. Um, the first one kind of specifically geared to Chinatown that's coming is the Mid-Peninsula Housing project that the city of Salinas has been working on. Three years away. Um, that will you know, establish housing for 50. Um, but I just would close to say that the, the housing, the overcrowding shortage in our community is something that's very real, very genuine, and something that you know, takes concerted attention. Uh, if I may, I just want to finalize it. You know, and, I, and I realize all of us and the homeless folks, especially, have been working very, very hard. But the pessimistic side of me is, we, we think we are up here, we think we've declared a state of emergency. We haven't. We have not declared that. We assume we declared that. Because once we declare what that, we have to define what that is. What is and we it? have not declared it as a disaster. Okay? We, there's a sense of urgency now, but that sense of urgency has only come within the last six months. And until we do so, in 30 days, when I ask that you come back, I hate to sound pessimistic, significantly, not much is going to change. These folks will be encampments elsewhere, and they're going to suffer, like they have been suffering, very significant difficulties to their health, their public safety. And uh, it, it, until we get on that level, uh, I, I think we should. It's just a matter of when. There's a lot of good proposals, but we have not, this is, this to me is, as one county supervisor, we are not treating this to the fullest extent as an emergency crisis. Yes. That's all. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, I am going to um, thank everyone for coming. Um, this, I uh, really appreciate uh, everyone who came to speak here today with everything that you have going on in your lives to really make sure that um, we're keeping our attention on this issue is really important. And uh, I want to let you know, uh, we hear you, we're working on the, the programs and things that we can affect, both for short-term and longer-term solutions. I would ask that when you come back in 30 days that um, there be uh, some way for you to tell us what kinds of identification of uh, properties or um, you know things that can be um, turned into uh, transitional or permanent uh, supportive housing um, in the short and medium term. Uh, the, the housing, the mid-pan housing, it's probably, what, two or three years away from being ready. Um, it's great that it's in the, in the process, but um, you know, when we're talking about suites starting next week, um, you know, we, need, we need to be really focusing on what we have in the, in the short and medium term uh, as well, and really keep our attention on this. Uh, yes, Ms. Robinson. Um, just kind of the other thing, because 
you know, and I've been looking at Charles for a little bit of how I word this. Um, but in terms of coming back to your board with the extension, uh, with a proposal to extend the case management services, the challenge is we haven't identified all the clients. I mean, so whether it comes from where, we're not sure. But um, that's why I kind of want to make sure that there's at least some level of concurrence that we include that in the proposal that we come back with. So um, I think as general direction, um, some modding. I, I, I just fail for me to the chair uh, to mention that uh, uh, it's taken a little bit longer than that I would have wanted to, but my office is, has been consulting with West White and others in county departments, and we're looking at bringing this uh, consultant, I forget his name, from Utah, <coughs> Lloyd uh, and, and, and trying to see if we could have a three or four hour study session. I want to be there <coughs> with, with the board of supervisors and other stakeholders, yeah. and so uh, cool. I just uh, <coughs> uh, yeah. wanted to mention that. After. And just yeah. for people's sake, is we're not going to lunch after this. We've got four hours of closed session, but now until four thirty. So if I could find a way to get out of that, I would. But okay. we have a responsibility to, to take care of what we need to do in closed session. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. No. Well, I'm going to close the discussion hey. now. We are going to recess into closed session. Um, we'll be back in several hours. We'll close session.